there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM with even more exclusive content with over 150 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music ad-free. Root for your team. Get news. Listen to whatever makes you laugh. And hear all about your favorite stars. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now. The Helix brand by Audio Tech Fisher from Germany has been absolutely on fire. Their distributor MSC has been making a ton of noise. And on this showcase, we've got a slew of brand new product to talk about. Super exciting, guys. You're not going to want to miss this. Stay locked in. This is CMA Showcase presented by Sirius XM Helix. And it starts now. What's going on, guys? And thanks for tuning in to this CMA Showcase presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. And when you see Showcase, you can expect some new product announcements. That's right. We've got both Larry Penn and Chris Van Rye from MSC America in the house and studio with us today. And we're going to be talking about some brand new product that they're launching right here on this showcase. So definitely something you want to lock in, take out a notepad. We're going to have a lot to learn about. So on that note, let's go ahead and invite these uh, product experts into our studios. As mentioned, we have both Larry Penn, who's the president, as well as Chris Van Rye, who's their technical sales support and training guru. Let's bring him in the studio. All right. What's going on, Larry? What's going on, Chris? Hello, Ben. Hey, Ben. How are you guys doing? Just paradise over here. Yeah, this paradise. Um, as you can see, I'm a little bit excited today because every time we see a showcase, we know there's going to be new product to talk about. Now, you guys have been a little bit on a rampage, you know, of late, and we're going to talk about that. But lots of new product to talk about coming off, you know, a big show in Arizona with the Master Tech. Um, man, the, this last year has been an absolute whirlwind, hasn't it, Larry? Yeah, it's so good to be back at it, yeah. out on the road and visiting dealers and doing trade shows and uh, just having a, a great time. So it's been very, very busy for us. Uh, that and the, the continuing development, we finally have some product that we're getting ready to deliver the systems by MSC that we've talked about uh, a lot and a bunch of new stuff coming from Helix and the Audio Tech Fisher crew this year. I think there's over 30 items that'll be released between now and the end of the year. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. And Chris, you know, along with, with the new product, obviously, there's been a lot of growth. You, you've you been taking in a lot of dealers. We've seen the pictures on social media. You guys have been teaching a lot. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun to get back out and get into stores with the retailers, uh, get them into our facilities, whether we use our training facility here in Calgary or uh, the Phoenix location, uh, really get these guys hands on and attacking these new products DSP, everything from basics and fundamentals all the way up to uh, advanced concepts all the way through. We've been having a lot of fun kind of getting after all these new toys that Helix has been giving us. Well, toys is definitely what we're here gathered to talk about today. But before that, I did mention Master Tech Expo. We had the privilege to talk to you guys when you were at the show. Uh, I know leading up to it, that was a lot of work on you guys' part. I mean, the, it was a whole team effort like you mentioned, Larry. Why don't you tell us a little bit, did Master Tech Expo deliver as expected? Yeah, I've been working with Brian uh, from Mobile Solutions USA on this a lot. Uh, it was uh, his brainchild and we shared a lot of ideas moving forward as the show got closer and closer. Uh, we're just tickled pink with the results of that. Uh, Brian and his team put a lot of effort into that as we did. Um, we had uh, a big booth there with all the new products. Uh, Guy from 
uh, Blam came out. We had the guys from Mobridge out from Australia. Um, we had three demo trucks outside highlighting the various versions of our um, uh, systems by MSC platform. Um, and inside was just a beautiful booth with a bunch of uh, eager MSC team uh, ready to tell you all about it. So we haven't stopped since then. It's just been going, going, going. I, I'm sure this whole year is just, like I said, had been a total whirlwind. What was your favorite moment from, from the expo, if, I, if you don't mind me asking, Larry? There's lots of highlights, but uh, probably just the uh, training aspect of getting everybody together in one room and talking about our vision for what we see in the industry and what we see with our products to, to fill that hole. And we did a, a special thing where we brought uh, Miguel Calderoni. He is the Superlux uh, sales manager for Grand Touring Automobiles in Calgary. So he represents the Lamborghini brand, Kona Seg, Bentley, uh, the whole nine yards. A couple Royce. entry level car brands. Yeah, just a couple. <laughs> and uh, together we did a presentation on um, working with high end automobile manufacturers, how to develop that relationship. More importantly, how to uh, nurture that relationship and keep it growing so we've been doing uh we've been having a lot of fun with that amazing amazing all right why don't you give us a quick overview of what we're about to learn today so uh we've been on a whirlwind of uh training we just had the guys up here from perfectionist in alaska came to calgary did training with that so you'll have to forgive us we're a little scatterbrained around here and we've got a bunch of new product launching and that's really the the key to this episode um, is talking about some of the new products that we've got going on, uh, talking about kind of the history of uh, Audio Tech Fisher and how their history and their relationships have led to some really cool products being developed. Um, so that that's really what we're going to focus on. We've got a bunch of cool new products. And so covering several different categories, no less. Yeah, as we're known for DSP. So um, we did... I think around 50,000 DSPs last year. Um, what How a lot many? 50,000 50, DSPs. Yeah. That's a lot of sound yeah. processing units. Holy <laughs> for you. Yeah. So we're, because of half of our business is uh, on the OEM platform, um, it was very uh, easy for us to obtain those numbers because those guys move through some product. But what that does allow us to do is uh, become very important partners uh, to people like AKM, who we uh, buy all our uh, chipsets from. Well, not all, but uh, AKM is a very important partner of ours. Um, and that's been, it's allowed us to grow and grow and grow that category. Well, I'll tell you what, we have a video mm -hmm. that'll kind of set the mood for what this show is going to be all about. And I think it's a yeah. little bit of coverage from uh, from MasterTech, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Chris, uh, our partner here on the show, put together this video, kind of gives us a real good rundown of the show and what we, what we saw and what we did. All right, well, let's do that. When we come back, we'll get some learning going. So let's roll Enjoy. the tape.
All right. So that's, you know, I got to admit, I mean, I, I feel bad. I didn't get a chance. There's no way, mark my words, there's no way I'm missing it in 2023. All right. So we're going to set up here for the next uh, portion of this show, which is probably the portion you're tuned into. And we're going to learn all about all these new great products that are coming out of the Helix camp. And from what Larry says, we'll be covering it under many different categories. Uh, it's not, not one or two items, folks. It's going to be a whole bunch. So let's see if the boys at MSC are ready to go. There's Larry. Let's get Chris back in here. Um, and Larry, uh, I do want to make one comment before we get into this presentation. I want to give you guys props. You guys look like you, you really put a lot of work into your your um, presence at that show between, you know, partnering up with uh, the supercar partner that you have and, and the booth that you had and the presentations. I mean, you know, based in Calgary, you guys hustled, man. So good on you guys for that. Really, seriously. It's not like you live in Arizona, you know what I mean? And it was, there, there's a lot of logistics involved there. So absolutely want to give you guys props for that. You know, uh, let's, oh, Larry, your microphone. Let's get your mic back. Nope. What happened to your microphone? Come on, Larry. <laughs> All right, Chris, are you there? Can we hear you? No, we lost your microphone too. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you guys a second to fix your microphone. And um, well, you can either nod or whatnot. But at the end of the day, I want to give these guys props. Because as you can see from those images, like the logistics behind bringing the type of vehicles that they had down there and bringing their booth and everything else is something else. All right, I think we got their microphones back on. Yeah, should there have it. Go. Okay, Larry. I was just trying to give you props, man. I get it. You don't. You don't have to take it. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm trying, trying to give you guys props. But uh, anyhow, without further ado, I think everybody's waiting for this presentation. Let's go ahead and get that on the screen, and then at that point, I can uh, give, hand you guys the stage, and you guys can do what you need to do and tell us all about this great stuff. Chris, let me hear your mic. I want to make sure that you're good. Can you hear me now? Oh, we definitely can. You guys, take it away, Larry. Take it away, Chris. Let's learn all about what's new at Helix. Perfect. So the big, big news is our. P6 DSP Ultimate. Um, this has been a planning now for over a year, and the P6 platform has been one of our best selling, not the, it is the best selling integrated DSP amplifier we've ever had. And the new Ultimate is kind of the, the de facto statement of this is the best we can possibly do uh, with this platform. So uh, if we go to the next slide, that'll show us some of the uh, inputs. One more, Chris. So this is the line input stage. So we have um, six uh, low-level inputs uh, as well as high-level inputs that will allow you to integrate in with a factory audio system or aftermarket audio system. We also have digital input in both Toslink and coaxial form now. And then on that front panel, you'll also see the ind individual sensitivity inputs for each channel pair. So we can um, make precise adjustments into the level coming in on the low level side. We've got the USB input that uh, plugs into the software, which we will talk about in a second. Those of you who've been waiting, version 5.0 is moments away from releasing. So we're going to give you kind of a sneak peek into that. But if we go to the other side of the amplifier, this is the output stage. And this is where it gets real cool. So we've got six uh, 125 watt channels now. And we also have six uh, preamp outputs available. So you see the four channel uh, RCAs there. And then it also has a digital output. And that digital output connects into our next two new product releases, which are the P1, which is our New monoblock uh, is a successor, P1 Mark II, successor to our wildly successful P1. And this one, we've stripped everything out of it. It is specifically designed to be a amplifier that is to be used in partnership with the P6 Ultimate or any of our other uh, processed amplifiers. Um, so it has digital input. So you can take that uh, Toslink digital output from the P6 Ultimate and go directly in here, making about 1,525 watts. And then we've got the P2 Mark II, which also has digital input. Again, we've stripped everything out of this. It is an amplifier stage to be used with the P6 Ultimate, and it has digital as well as analog inputs and is running at two ohms, about 500 watts per channel, 500 watts times two. So the, the beauty of this, Ben, is you can take a, uh, P6 Ultimate 
and run six channels. So let's say front tweeter, front mid-range, rear speakers, take a P2 to a pair of eight inch mid bass in the door at 500 watts a side, and then take the P1 at 1500 watts to drive your subwoofer. All three chassis are exactly the same size, exactly the same look. So you get that nice family look and build a, an amazing powerhouse of 120 by six, 500 by two, and 1535 by one, and have up to 192 uh, 24-bit um, in, digital input for absolute high infidelity. So that that trio we're super excited about. What do you think? Oh, did we lose Ben? <laughs> Anyways, the next uh, next part sorry, here. Sorry, oh, sorry about that, Larry. I was going to let you go the whole way, and I was going to comment at the end. I'm taking notes here, as you know. All right. Cool. Questions. We'll let you go through, and then we'll come back at the Sounds end. Sounds good. All right. So next product, that's our Helix DSP Pro Mark III. So again, DSP Pro has been kind of our standard uh, processor for many, many years, and we're now in Mark III uh, generation. This will be shipping within the next 30 days. And this, if we look at the input stage, now gives us now gives us uh, eight channels of input, either on the high level mode or the low level mode, as well as digital coaxial input or toss link input as well. So very, very versatile piece. On the output side, we have 10 outputs um, to deal with any, any kind of uh, system configuration you wanna do. On the inside of the board, is this is just the CAD drawing, but it, if you look at those uh, inputs, there's a switch associated with that. So this will allow this unit to take up to 32 volts of input on the high level side. And this is true also, I forgot to mention with the P6 Ultimate. So no matter what uh, factory OEM signal you're gonna be using into this thing, no matter what the power, we're able to deal with it. And all of these feature are ADP3 circuitry which is the smartest high level interface available. And, and that's one thing that I wanna uh, kind of zoom in on here a little bit is that there is uh, interfacing, OEM integration, and then there's DSP on the tuning side. So our DSPs are offering world-class integration as well as the DSP side for ultimate tuning flexibility. So really we open up the the book on what you can do with these products. Next, um, next we have the K10S subwoofer. This is our first in the line of shell amount subwoofers. Uh, we have been shipping that now for about four months and it is an amazing uh, subwoofer to be used in either a small sealed enclosure or a small vented enclosure. The picture you see is of the new dust cap um, that we've re-engineered and that'll be shipping in about another 30 to 45 days. But the beauty of this thing is that it's very compact. It's not super shallow, uh, about two and a half, three inches uh, of depth on that guy, but super, super good fidelity, super low frequency extension, just works really well. So if we go to the next slide, you'll see a picture of the new K10 SE, which is a shallow mount enclosure designed to fit under the seat of uh, pickup trucks, anything like that, or in the hatchback where you can lay stuff on top of the box, it's down firing and offers that really low profile. The K10E, uh, our regular woofer, um, that box has been doing extremely well for us. This is just another version of that that's super shallow and will be used a lot under the seat of uh, today's trucks. Go to the next slide. This is our rework of the F-Series loudspeakers. And we haven't really gone super deep uh, with Helix in the loudspeaker end of things, but this year is gonna give us a whole new look at our horsepower involved with Helix loudspeakers. So this is the entry level. There's actually one series below that that just offers a six inch coax and component. But the F-Series is a full uh, full size, no matter what size you want to put in the, or need for a vehicle, we have that available. And is, I explain the Helix sound is just really mellow, really laid back and super accurate sounding. And the F-Series doesn't disappoint with that. And this is the new look for the product. We'll be shipping this 
uh, probably in the next 60 to 90 days. And again, will be offered in all sizes. If we go to the next slide, you'll see the coaxial version of that. Uh, and that's it there. So we got a little bit of a secret uh, that we can't uh, disclose today, but uh, by the end of this year, probably really late in the year, we are going to change the speaker game in the way uh, that you, as a retailer, that you stock and can come up with many, many different versions, if you will, of speakers that you need uh, from a universal speaker to a direct fit, uh, direct fit speaker situation. Um, it's gonna be a, a game changer. We just uh, got the patents uh, accepted, just got a German patent on the whole uh, design on this. It's gonna be a, a big game changer. So it'll be a very good time to look at the Helix loudspeaker line because we're come the end of this year, we think we're gonna have a rightful place in the market in, in terms of from entry level to extreme high end speakers with things like the BRAC speaker. So if we go to the next slide, um, that kind of brings that into light. This is our new ML50P. And this is a two inch uh, full range loudspeaker. You can kind of see the um, phase plug in the middle of that through the grill. Uh, and that's a true machined aluminum phase plug, aluminum grill, uh, cast aluminum basket. Um, we had these in our hands for the Master Tech Expo and uh, it, it, the product is unbelievably cool. It's got that man jewelry look to it uh, and fit and feel. It's just, uh, just an incredible product. So there is also the graphic edition of that, which is the step down. And we will be releasing both of these products in the next 60 to 90 days as well. If we go, uh, I think that's it. Yes, that is it. So um, that's kind of a wrap up of the, the new product, Ben. And uh, that's just a taste because we got well, much more coming down the line uh, this year. But And I know the Brax was kind of outside of our Helix window, but I wanted to uh, give a little teaser on that. So, of course, I have some questions for you. Uh, sure. You, you ran through that a little bit quick because... That first ultimate series, I, I want I want you to give you an opportunity to kind of lay that out for for dealers because sure. we know about the V8 and the V12, very popular. We're seeing them pop up in installations everywhere. It's an all-in-one solution, multi-channel, integrated DSP. Help us understand the difference between the 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 P6 line of products versus the V line of product. Yeah, so the the V8 and V12 um, are the same output devices, same power supply, uh, either an eight channel uh, configuration or 12 channel configuration. The P series uh, uses a different power supply, allows us to increase the power uh, to now 125 uh, times six. Um, and the big step for us this year was the integration of the coaxial digital input as well as the Toslink digital input. Um, so now we can work with any uh, factory OEM um, preamp device that we use for MoBridge or NavTV or whatever uh, interface that you may use and come direct digital into this product. So if you use that bitstream, and as I say, we'll take on the coaxial side, we'll take up the 192 24 bit uh, signal input. So as far as reference type source units, we're gonna interface with that, run through all in the digital domain, all of our time alignment, EQ, uh, all that stuff is done in the digital domain. And then it doesn't get converted to analog until the very final amplifier stage of the amplifier. Okay, so um, would you say then, would this statement be right where uh, this setup is more uh, for those looking for more power output, uh, going through the P6, then going through the mono and, uh, or, or the two channel, so on and so forth, versus going the V8 or V12 route? Yeah, the, the P6 is going to be the, the command center, if you will, of a super high fidelity, high powered system. Because when we use that in conjunction with the P2 and mm -hmm. the P1, now we have 125 times 6 plus 500 watts times 2 plus 1,535, I think, is the actual number on the mono. Is that a 2-ohm single? Uh, a 2-ohm the, the mono? That on the mono block is in 1-ohm. A one ohm, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Two ohm stereo on the uh, P2, and then the other is four ohm rating on the P6 at uh, the 125 a channel. 
And just so the, the viewers are clear, as far as the DSP, the sound processing portion of both those series, it's the exact same type of processing? Yeah, so we're using the uh, dual DSP chipset that we've been using in the Ultra. So mm -hmm. the, the DSP quality is at the Ultra level. We now have the ACO base platform in it so we can use all of our real center uh, upmixing algorithms. Uh, we've got our all pass filter uh, stage in there, um, our base restoration circuit, uh, all that stuff is on board now and allow you to use the new conductor. Um, all the ACO base platform things are in there. Love that conductor, by the way. For the, if you haven't seen <laughs> that, check out the conductor from Audio Tech Fisher. Probably the slickest interface on the market right now to control your DSP. Um, the other question I have for you, moving on to the speakers now. So uh, Actually, let's talk hang, about hang on one sec. If we can just go back to screen sharing with Chris. Yeah, I wanted, sure can. I wanted to bring this up because this is super important. I was uh, having a discussion with Julian from Germany today. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of you may know the term AKM. That's a, a very uh, reputable high-end uh, chipset manufacturer out of Japan. And you may have heard the stories of the factory burning down uh, in the middle of the COVID situation. Mm -hmm. um, they're back up and running. And this is just an excerpt from their, um, from their website. And if you look there um, in automotive audio, uh, you'll see our product highlighted and more importantly to us, if we scoot down, um, we can see all of the brands. And this is a, a proud moment for me because there's some big players in there. We talk about Pioneer, Panasonic, Onkyo, Marantz. Some uh, high-end stuff Yamaha. like Lin. Look at Lin, yeah, Lin, Lin. in there, esoteric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And look in the top left-hand corner is you'll see this little company out of Germany called Audio Tech Fisher, which is bringing, uh, eight, we're a, a huge partner to AKM, uh, especially in the automotive world uh, in DSP chipsets. So that's important to me. Um, we were an engineering based company because we everything is done in house. We design the, the, all these products that you see here. This is on AKM's website. Okay, gotcha. So they're talking about our product on their website, using the product, they're showing the guts of the product. Um, so even though I think we do a, a damn good job of taking this message to the street, I wanted to uh, point out our technical background uh, and our extreme partnerships with other brands that really bring uh, top level engineering and top level sound quality to the importance of what they're doing. And oh, very important. AKM very important. Velvet Sound. We're we're pretty proud to be associated with them and to have this kind of recognition from them. So mm -hmm. how that translates to dealers and end users is we know we're getting a top flight product that's been engineered. That's a partnership with the with the chipset supplier. So it cool. kind of brings that to light. Honestly, you're just layering another layer on top of a multi-layer cake when it comes to the DSP side of things. Um, and I'm not that I'm not super excited about uh, the DSP Ultimate Amplifier, but I think Helix, I can see the move that's happening here, the focus and the shift towards the speaker line. Now you drop something at the end. I don't think you get away with that. I'm going to circle back <laughs> to you on that. But first, let's talk about the shallow subwoofer. So uh, the, is this available in what size? This is in only 10? Yeah, so right now it is a dual 2-ohm 10-inch uh, subwoofer. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have that available in 8-inch and 12-inch later ah, on this year. Okay. Um, and like all of our subwoofers, all of our subwoofers in the, in the Helix line are dual 2-ohm. And if you know about our product, you'll know that that's where uh, we extract the most power from our little match amplifiers and everything. They are designed to run at 2-ohm to uh, get the most power, most dynamics out of the system. But we also, uh, with our new designs, amplifier designs, and some of the things that we have coming down the pipe, we required a single two ohm uh, subwoofer. So the entire K series subwoofer line will be available as a single two ohm as well later on this year. Okay, very cool. So we'll have uh, an eight inch, 10 inch, and 12 inch shallow mount. Shallow. Uh, yeah. Do you have handy the just to give the listeners an idea of enclosure required for the 10 or for the shallow? Uh, the shallow 10 is about a half a cubic foot. Wow, that's not a lot. Yeah. That's pretty small. Yeah, perfect. Okay. I, and um, that 
enclosure that you showed because you didn't see, I didn't see the woofer side of it. That's a single 10 in that shallow enclosure. So that's the K10S woofer that we're talking about and it mm -hmm. down fires. Mm -hmm. So we've got it tuned because we know the load that's going to be put on the woofer. It's down firing. So from a end use consumer standpoint, they can put it in a hatchback or under the seat of their truck. And the common complaint with truck enclosures is, hey, my dog's got to run around back there or whatever. So now you can still fold up the seat. The dog or the groceries or whatever can still go on top of the subwoofer enclosure and not change its sound or risk any damage to the driver at all. And put groceries on top. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's my situation. But anyhow, yeah. Um, now let's move on to the F series. Now you mentioned that the F series comes in not quite at the entry, but it's in, in the middle. Is that did I get that right? Yeah. There's so actually what, what are the layers? There's one uh, one line below that, which is L, and okay. there's the uh, component six inch kit and a coax six inch. That's all they build in that oh, okay. in that range. So the F series is our first uh, range that's going to come in all sizes, component and coax. Uh, and that line has been around for quite a while now, but this revamp to it will be out later this year and is, uh, and it's right across the board. Like all of them are getting the cosmetic change and the, yes. the new upgrade. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very good. And then we also have the S series, which we released this year, uh, that that's constantly shipping. There'll be a redo of the P series speakers and a redo of the C series speakers all this year. And then, um, as I said, at the end of the year, um, there will be a big, big now, did hugabaloo. You, did I, did I, that's, a, that's a new series, or is that just a patent that's going on to all series? This is a whole new concept in automotive speaker design uh, that's going to make life for our retailers much, much easier. Uh, and I can't well, obviously really that's, say... That's going to have to do with the trim and the tabs and somehow the fitment. Obviously. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, guys, I'm trying. Just so you know, I am trying. All right. So when can we expect such news, Larry? Uh, that, that'll that, be uh, right uh, at the end of the year on that. We we have a, a special rollout plan for that. And that's and specifically gonna, for the Helix line or all Audio Tech Fisher? Just, well, all Audio Tech Fisher throughout this year. As I said, we've got about 30 plus products that will be rolling so out. Including, uh, this would affect calendar. rack speakers as well as a match? Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Um, so, last but not least, before I let you go get the next thing done, um, that sneaky Brax piece that you threw in there, right? So <laughs> that is what type, you didn't talk too much technical on that. Like give me a little bit more. What is the, how is the build on that? What type of speaker is it? Was there a frequency range on that? So that is designed. It's a rather compact, compact guy, uh, 50 millimeter cone. Okay. And for our U S guests, that's about two inches. Um, and we're going to have two versions of that. Uh, the Brax uh, GL, which will be a, a no um, no phase plug in the middle, okay. um, with the traditional uh, matrix style cone, or sorry, traditional graphic style cone, and then we're going to have the ML, which has that phase plug in the middle, um, and that it carries over the cone material from the rest of the ML range. So that's going to allow you to do a uh, tweeter two inch up in the, you know, the, there's a lot of people building um, a pillar enclosures. So now we're going to be able to shrink the size of those. So they look cosmetically appealing into the car um, as well as give you the performance that you need. So that, frequency range on that guy is going to be like from 300 Hertz to four or five K somewhere around there. Well, and that they'll play higher than that, but that would be sure. usable. And what is the suggested match as far as the the mid range and the drivers for the for to match that? Well, we only in the in the respective lines ML, uh, we only make one tweeter. That's the ML one. Okay. So you'd use ML one, ML fifty P, and then the ML six D um, for the for the mid base or the ML eight mid base um, to make it a three way kit. Very nice, very nice. And that's kind of its design premises. I mean, it the, the ML50P is a full range uh, speaker, so it will play high frequency, but uh, we see it being used mostly uh, with the ML1 tweeter uh, to just give you that air. That, uh, yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, really at of. that level, you know, it's all about the, the active, you know, uh, setups like that, all a la carte, right? So absolutely. Right. Yeah. Um, now, Chris, I'm going to pay my shift my attention to you. 
I heard there's some new um, revision. Is it a revision to the, the DSP PC tool? I'm going to go even deeper than that. This is more a uh, restructuring. There has been an overhaul from all different aspects of the systems. Uh, still in Audio Tech Fisher fashion, it's evolutionary. The process that you go through for calibrating a system is going to follow the same basic steps and structures. Uh, but we've added a lot of technology to allow better end results and faster, uh, uh, faster path to get to those results at the same time. Even faster, because the feedback that I've heard from dealers is that uh, your system is pretty simple, pretty easy, um, not very complicated. So I'm interested to see how they added more features while still keeping it simple. Well, that's one of the cool things is with a company that's built the system the way they have and followed this evolution. This is, I think, Porsche and the 911. Somehow it keeps getting faster, Some keep, how it keeps getting more capable yet more comfortable, more efficient, everything continues to evolve. Uh, so with the, um, the product control, the design, everything being in-house the way it is, mm -hmm. we can take that stuff and really continue to escalate time after time. All right, well, I'll give you a second to set up the screen. And when you get that set up, Chris is gonna run us through the new DSP tool hub. And you know what? Uh, we'll leave it to Chris. Let's we'll get Larry and myself off so Chris can have full focus and we'll come back when you're done. Hey, Chris, we got your screen, just lost your microphone. Let's see if we get your microphone back. We got to hear you. Let's see what we can do. Perhaps if we brought Larry back, we can uh, hear his microphone on his computer. Perhaps that would work. Hey, Larry, are you, you there? I yeah, am. we got you now. Let's keep it like that. All right. Then. All right perfect. So what we're going to get with this is a menu that we're used to seeing. All of our output screens or virtual tabs, all of that stuff is as it's been. The biggest change that's come in is in the RTA side. When we come in here, one of the big changes right here, a little feature we've added called Tune EQ. So up to this point in our DSPs, we've been able to use our measurements with the built-in RTA, and we've been able to use our set EQ to apply any measured changes needed into our automatic EQ and have that happen in one quick step. What the big change though, is now we select two EQ and we get this new menu that opens up. So down here, we have the ability to adjust how many bands we want to use to get to our target. We can set the maximum deviation uh, that we want to allow in there and we can set the window. What frequencies on which drivers do we want to control? But the magic that comes here is this tune EQ calculation. Traditionally, we've always operated in the graphic equalizer world. This has now pushed us to completely parametric. Mm. We have an algorithm that's built in that's going to go through and automatically calculate up to 27 bands, of parametric equalization. And then that happens in about two to three seconds. And we still now get to go through and hit our set EQ and have it automatically adapt those calibrations into the DSP down below. So we're gonna see all of these numbers across the bottom here. These will shift to blue. That's gonna tell us that we're in parametric mode. It's gonna calculate the frequency and the Q and the gain for every band required. Now I say band required because we give it up to 27 bands, but if it calculates that it can do the changes required in 14 or six or needs all 27, it's gonna be able to make that happen for you. We can come in, we've got some adjustments on this as well. So if we go to the RTA settings, we have the ability to see and adjust our target curve. So you can customize that for your particular sound if you wanna have a target curve that you've been using or you wanna to learn to create your own. You can come in here and adapt that on the fly. We can go through and with these guys, this operates in a one six octave uh, resolution for the RTA side. 
we can go through and have this system automatically adjust those windows. So instead of having this operate from 20 to 20 or having to manually set it to 80 to 300 for your mid base, you can actually have this automatically set those windows based on the channels that you're adjusting. It will adjust. So when you set your mid base, it will look at that window specifically. When you move to your mid range, it will automatically tweak that window for you. Keeps everything nice, easy, efficient, and focused in on what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, so to add to that for Chris is it's using, it will automatically set the equalization that it's doing in the window of that driver that you're EQing for. And it won't affect anything on the uh, high, high side of that or low side of that when it's about to pass off to the other driver. In these configurations, we also have the ability to set the thresholds we're looking at. We can set the max deviation that we want to try and allow. So the tighter that deviation is, in this case, plus or minus 0.1, we're likely going to use more bands. Now that's going to get us a little bit closer into the whole thing, but does require a little bit more time uh, and is going to lean heavier on the DSP. We can open that up a little bit if we're looking for a more efficient tuning process, quick results to get to where we want. We can actually open this up and spread it out if we want to. The other threshold we can adjust is the maximum boost that we're asking the system to use. If the algorithm is looking at a hole or a big dip in the frequency response, it may decide to actually stack parametric EQ bands. So putting multiple bands on one spot to create uh, the boost or the cut that's required. So we can actually come in and limit the max boost that it's gonna add into the mix. When we come down, so we've got our auto set configurations. This is now gonna go through and allow you to hit auto set. It will run through a 10 second measurement cycle. So where you're taking the spatial average, you're moving the microphone from one ear to e the other ear. At that 10 seconds, it will automatically make those changes and restart the measurement again. So you can just keep sweeping back and forth until you get the results that you're looking for. Down at the bottom here, the last couple of second uh, selections that we have is our target curve. We have our own AudioTech Fisher target curve, uh, which is a nice, smooth, natural sounding response. Leaves a little bit in the lower extra, uh, uh, extra frequency response in the lower mid range. And that's there to help compensate for the noise that we deal with in a vehicle that's not in a home or studio type recordings uh, situation. Most target curves that are out there are built from that home background. Once we move that into a car where we've got tire noise, wind noise, uh, all that stuff that factors in, that does a lot of damage to this lower mid range. So we leave a little bit of extra energy to help compensate for that. If you find you like that, fantastic. We've had probably 90% or better uh, practical application users that will go through and say this is absolutely phenomenal in the car. But if you wanna go through and tweak that, you can come in, select custom. And now by simply moving the sliders around, you can tailor this to be whatever it is that you want it's in there. If you wanted more bass or more, uh, more bass, more treble, completely customizable across the board. Chris, can I just interrupt you for one second to be clear? Please do. This whole menu here, is this new uh, compared to the previous version or just this menu? Part of it? This menu existed before, but now has a whole lot more customization to it. Gotcha. Things like the target curve adjustment we've been able to do for a lengthy period of time. But now we can go through and add in how it's going to react with the parametric situation and the automatic processes. Now, when we come back, any change that you've made, this gray shaded area will be adjusted and that becomes your target. That's what the system will automatically tune to. So PC-205, really exciting because it's going to open up a network and a bunch of features that most guys aren't diving into. The parametric allows a lot more customization, a lot more control over the frequency response, but has always taken some more time, some more skill, and some more interpretive abilities. Now having this built into our software, the availability to automatically calculate that system and then automatically apply those changes to the challenge channels of choice you're going to be in incredible working space at this point um a lot of questions that i see come through is you know what you guys preach a lot of systems do you have preset 
files for specific vehicles and specific systems? So when it comes to the different systems that are there, we've got a range of different possibilities. Now, uh, obviously with all of our tunes, we can go through and save these. So every dealer that's tuning cars is going to have access to their own files. Mm -hmm. Us, MSC through the retail uh, experience, we're constantly tuning cars. Uh, through this side, we do a 100% DSP attachment rate. So every car that leaves the shop has a DSP in it. And of course that's leaving tuned and calibrated. And that's something that we make available to all of our dealer partners. So when uh, they're going through and attacking a car, we can help them with system design based on our experiences, based on our resources to find out what's going on in these things. When the system gets installed by the dealer, now we've also got a backup tune to go along with that product and that system design. Because, you know, I, I, let's be honest, being able to predict and repeat and rinse and repeat the re repeatable results is a big thing for dealers, especially in this new age of complex settings. And, you know, I, and I, I know I'm going off a little bit here, but you brought it up because, you know, with the software, it's allowing a lot more tools for, for the tuner to, you know, dial it in, as you say, with yep. all these automatic settings, you get it, you set it, you forget it, done. But at the same time, um, with the network that you have, and I wanted to focus on this because this is the feedback I get from dealers. You know, you, you guys are supporting them with this type of stuff, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to explain why the dealers uh, are so on board with this whole program that you guys have set up when it comes to DSP and their whole repeatability thing. Uh, I'll answer that in probably the best way that I can. And, you know, there's some people out there that aren't fans of auto tuning and uh, all that stuff. And I admit I was one of them because over the years I've used different auto tuning processes and it led to horrific results. Um, I, I'm a complete convert now because with uh, uh, version 5.0, with this new um, uh, tune EQ feature, we're using real complicated algorithms, but putting it in the simplest form that we possibly can. Now, if you are a diehard guru that want to get in there and attack things yourself and do it channel by channel and do this and do that all on the manual side, we can go as deep as any processor on the market and deeper from some of our technology in there. And let's not forget on, on the cool side, we've got the real center algorithms. We've got base augmentation algorithms. Um, so we can do it automated to make it really simple for our dealers. We can do it manual. So those who are into uh, competition circuits or uh, just want to play around and get really in depth with it. We've got that. And then from a production standpoint, we've got these tunes already done for you. Uh, and with consultation with you and either Chris or myself with a phone call, call it the bat phone, you just phone us and those dealers out there uh, that deal with us now will know exactly what I mean by that. We're here for you. And, to the bat phone. Uh, yeah, to the back we got a car in the bay. To the back phone. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? Yeah, exactly. So, um, version 5.0 just uh, opens up the world in terms of complexity and simplicity, all in one tiny little box, and that's the biggest, coolest thing. There's a list of all this stuff or all the things that version 5.0 will do, and we'll cover that off on its mm -hmm. own CMA episode. But mm -hmm. we wanted to give you uh, a little touch. This has been in development now for, I think uh, Florian's been working um, on this for a long time. It's coming, so, Jeff. Do, it's do coming, you see man. Jeff's hands? Those are his little hands up there. <laughs> hands. I see that. <laughs> ben, I want to add uh, one quick thing yeah. here that uh, Larry touched on. Mm -hmm. uh, with PC205, all of these automated processes are designed to get you efficiently to your target. But at no point do they limit what you can do after the fact. The auto-tune process mm -hmm. makes all the changes, shows you every change that's made, and still gives you the ability to customize above and beyond. So if you wait, went so in hold there, on, wait, wait. You mean so it auto-tunes, it sets everything, but you can still go in and play with each individual parameter. That's exactly it. Okay. If you want to go in and change how much gain uh, or cut has been added at a particular frequency, if you want to go through and uh, change frequencies, if you want to change how the high frequency response is working on one set, one channel. You can go through and tweak all of it, portions of it, none of it, leave what the algorithm does, anything you want. So even if you are that in-depth, I wanna do it all myself, I wanna re get really tweaky with it, you've got the ability to get yourself in the ballpark in a heartbeat.
and then you can spend as much or as little time from there as you want. Okay, so here's my question. Chris, being the technical sales support man, of the amount of calls that you have coming in from shops, break yep. this out for me in percentages of those that love the, just basically run just the auto stuff, those that don't, couldn't care for the auto stuff and only want the custom, you know, engineering style routine, or those yep. that literally will just go with the pre-tunes that you guys have already said. What's that pie look like? So the, the pre-tune side of things, um, if we've got a dealer who's uh, brought us involved into the system design process uh, and they've equipped the vehicle with the same gear, we're going to supply that file, no questions asked. Mm -hmm. It's going to come with it. We're going to email that thing over, you load it in. Because if that's, you know, if you're comfortable attacking that stuff and you're ready to do it, you've got the time to do it, you're going to end up in a very similar spot. We may have our own little salt and pepper on there, but mm -hmm. this is going to get you to 95% or better. Now, the other side of things is if you've got a car that doesn't have a pre-done tune, I would say our dealer base is currently about 90 plus percent in the automated process. 90. Okay. Using exactly what that algorithm spits out. And there's numerous ways you can do that. You can kind of scale that. You can do a global EQ where you're doing all channels at once, or you can scale that up and go in rows, front, rear, mm -hmm. subwoofer kind of thing. You can go up from there and do channel pairs, tweeters, mid-range, mid-base, rears, center, sub. You can go even farther and do individual channel by channel by channel. But at the end of the day, no matter which path you're going to go, you're always chasing a target curve. And you either need to put that information into your EQ one band at a time or click the auto set function and do all 30 bands at once. So equalization phase? Auto? No, no. No phase. So Just we have an automated measure. time measurement function. Right. But we don't factor in uh, phase or polarity into those guys because of some of the other variables, whether we're dealing with reflections in the cars mm -hmm. or the fact that acoustically you may want to have certain channels out of polarity with others. So we leave that automated uh, or out of the automated part. You set all that stuff manually. So now once you've got your polarities checked electrically, you can set the system up acoustically. Now you can go through and set your time measurements, gotcha. which we've got a we've got an automated process for that. Once that's done, take a quick reference, make sure all the speakers are working together in the listening position. Now you can dive into the automated EQ process. Gotcha. Yeah, we kind of uh, we didn't talk about that, but there has in version 5.0. There's also been some improvements on our ATM, which is our automatic automatic time measurement. And that is done uh, with impulse response because we can either use a measuring tape or a laser beam to just get the measurement to each speaker in the car, or you can use our ATM, which is uh, sending pulses out to each speaker. And the microphone is actually listening to how long it took that pulse to get there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. And then automatically adjust the that, that uh, time I've, settings I've seen, for I've it. seen, I think we've talked about this in the past, and that's very similar to like a modern home theater setup where... Correct. Exactly. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. The only difference is with that, Ben, is we're dealing with near field monitor stuff with high reflection values. So that ATM uh, setup in, in our stuff is our own proprietary algorithm. Very so nice. it's not just a simple impulse response measurement. We took into consideration all the troubles with the acoustics in the car. And that is developed by our engineering, our in house engineering team. Uh, we're going to stop there because we can go deep into a rabbit hole of geekiness. Uh, but there's other <laughs> stuff we want to talk about. So I want to say thank you, Chris, for bringing up a couple of the key features in the new software update. Thank you. Um, let's talk about the business of, of, of selling Helix and doing business with MSC. Um, I'd like to ask you, Larry, what makes a product successful in a dealer shop? Well, <laughs> it's something that i've uh, developed over the years of doing some wrong things and some right things um, and I, I am now thoroughly convinced that a product with a price list is not the only answer you can have the best product in the world at the right price but if you don't have the relationship and understanding the dealer understanding your culture and you understanding the dealer's culture uh, it's it's really 
really important to have the dealer understand your culture. And when we liken this to other markets, like a Porsche dealer or a Rolex dealer or any, any brand, Dyson, anything like that, everything is done to continue the culture that the manufacturer has created down to the distributor, into the hands of the retailer, and then into the hands of the consumer. So it's our job to work with our retailers to make sure that message, the cultural message, the brand image message is consistent from manufacturing level all the way down to, I don't want to say down, but all the way across to the hands of the consumer. Fair. So yeah, we're, yeah. we're working no, really, mm. yeah, we're working really hard with the dealers, uh, with displays and in-store merchandising and uh, national advertising that we're about to start this year to make sure that message gets across. So we feel we need to do a great marketing job to give this message of our engineering based company and bring that to the minds and hands of consumers in a clear, concise, consistent message, no matter whether they're looking at the product in Dallas or Vancouver or Montreal or whatever. And um, we have worked with some amazing dealers uh, throughout the, the years since we started this about four years ago. And um, there's many of them that have understood this and worked with us on this culture and we're absolutely killing it uh, in each store. And then uh, we, we back that up with some pretty crazy training. And we're going to let Chris explain to you what we're, what we're doing on the training. But I think that just for Canadian, out of the Calgary office, we've done about 40, 50 people already this year. And we're going to ramp that up some more. And we did four or five events at the end of the year in uh, the U.S. So mm. it's, it's something totally different because the, the product is the product. And Audio Tech Fisher, we, we have reasons to believe it's some of the best product out there. But that's just part of the mix. You can't put this great product in the hands of somebody if you, they don't know how to display it, sell it, don't understand the culture of the company and everything else. Chris, I'm going to get to you in a second. I do want to ask you about training. He, Larry's right. But I want to co uh, connect a dot here. You know, you said that, this, you know, from the manufacturer to distributor down the show and so forth. But I want to highlight something that I think MSC is doing really well. You guys are, yes, you guys may be the North American distributor for Audio Tech Fisher, but I feel like you're really an extension of Audio Tech Fisher here in North America, more so than just a distributor. How about talk, talking, us, talking to us about that relationship? Yeah, it's um, really important to me that we bring the message of the manufacturer to our dealers. And the only way to do that, just like our dealers working with us, we need to work that closely with the boys at Audio Tech Fisher and from Heinz and Gudrun and Julian and Florian and Utah and Alex and everybody there at the office. We just have a connection with them that allows us to share good things and bad things. Like if there's something that's not right, uh, they'll be the first to tell me <laughs> and I'll be the first to tell them to we need to partner together to make this happen. So you're absolutely right. I love that term extension because we are an extension of the factory. We're not a distributor. If, I don't want to take that in a negative context either because there's, there's, uh, there's areas where a distributor for a commodity product is important, but this isn't a commodity product. It requires uh, a lot more effort uh, at all levels and we're here to support that. Okay, thank you, Larry, for that. Let's go back to the whole training thing because I, I follow you guys on Facebook. I always see like your your your, your showroom is basically a quasi showroom slash, you know, um, training room school. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's a learning <laughs> space. Anyhow, it transforms. Um, so, what is the feedback of all these uh, you know retailers that have come through now and have ha experienced this this whole training program that you guys have developed? Well, the big thing on this side for us is this facility, whether uh, you look at it from a retail standpoint, an installation facility, a training center, uh, an office, whatever, whatever vision you look at, this is our proof of concept. This adapts to all different things uh, and allows us to do all the things that makes MSC unique. Um, as Larry had mentioned, we have had uh, in the last eight to nine months, uh, roughly 140 dealers uh, through active training. And these aren't just a quick hour, two hour, you know, we'll grab some dinner, we'll 
run through the PowerPoints and call it a day kind of thing. These are two day events. Uh, these dealers come into one of these two training centers. They're going to get everything from cultural training, sales training, product training, DSP process training. So whether we're talking about the actual tuning aspects of it, uh, integration side of things, how to measure what's going on with vehicles to make intelligent and educated decisions about how they're going to attack approving the audio system in the car. Um, as we get into day two, we run through our tuning for profit process, a, a process we've come up with that allows us to provide repeatable, uh, efficient tunings in all kinds of different applications. We've got stations that we've set up that actually let guys get in uh, with a set of headphones and a DSP and actually hear these changes that they're making. We can talk about polarity. We can talk about phase, why those things are different, why they're both important, frequency response, what crossovers mean, what they do, how much of an impact they can have. Uh, we've got drills that we run through that allow you to still start uh, zeroing in on frequencies, start educating your ear on how to listen for certain things. So when you're listening to a song and something jumps out and says, this isn't right, how do we efficiently chase that problem down, get it resolved so that when we deliver this car to a client, we've got something that's going to put a smile on his face and goosebumps on his arms. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Solution, solution, solutions. Oh, wait, it's in your name, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I'll, I'll uh, Larry, give you yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I'll just give you an example on that because we just finished uh, yesterday with uh, John Schwartz and the crew from Perfectionist and they're, uh, they were here for the weekend and we did all this training and, you know, John's been in this game for a very long time and uh, he just said this is absolutely one of the best training sessions I've ever been at and he had... Uh, um, Robert, his uh, salesman who won Sales Pro of the Year, and Robert said, man, I've, I've learned so much uh, here that it gives me a total different perspective of what I'm dealing with. And these are the things that fuel us. And I have a, a line that we use called fun, easy, and profitable. The job's got to be fun, it's got to be easy to do, and it's got to be profitable. So we took the fun quotient, and this is just a little jab at uh, our American friends we went to game seven at Calgary Flames and Dallas Stars uh, with the guys from Perfectionist and they hadn't, a couple of them hadn't been to a live NHL game. So game seven, overtime, victorious, it was great. So Beautiful. that's all part of the culture experience as well, uh, where we get to know each other, what, find out what make uh, each other tick and, and just enjoy it. Larry, I'm going to give you the final message, the final word here. Uh, it's been a great show. We talked about a lot of new stuff. We talked about the software, talked about the culture. Now give me your final message to dealers who may be tuning in who aren't currently MSC customers. What do you have to say to them? We'd love to chat with you. Um, we think it's a, it's important that you understand who we are, as I, I've just said. And we're, we're not for everybody because not all the time are dealers going to understand what we're, what our message is or what we're trying to do or may not agree with it. And, and that's cool. Um, but those of you who are excited about the product and excited about what the product can do. We've got a lot of things in the back kitchen um, that are gonna help you be real successful with it and take the, the nervousness out of dealing with today's new cars and integration. And I don't know how to tune, I'm just a fabricator. Uh, and, and Jeff's little comment that just popped up there, just be 212. And uh, for those of you who've been in our training, you'll know what I mean. Thanks, Jeff, I appreciate that. Jeff uh, from AMP, uh, has been at one of our trainings and he's a great friend of the company and a great personal friend. And um, we value that relationship a lot, but that's what it's about. We have relationships with uh, other manufacturers. We can find answers for you that uh, are troubling you when it's beer o'clock on Friday in the Bay and you need to figure something out. We're here for you. And that's the basic difference with us. We've got fantastic products from audio tech Fisher to allow us to do it. And you have uh, a team that we've assembled here at our company that are there to help you. And that's the, the big, big difference with us. And the so retail we, store to back it all up. So let's review real quick. Whole new product line, lots of stuff coming up from Helix. Some new toys coming up from Brax as well. Big yeah. announcement that we're waiting for. That's a game changer, according to Larry Penn, for the speaker game. So we'll follow up with you on that. <laughs> and uh, some really cool updates to streamline the processes that much further with the new software update on the PC tools. That's pretty much the wrap. 
I wanted to highlight, of course, the work that you did at MasterTech and, of course, the continued work you do with dealers, getting them trained, getting them to that next level, being part of that culture, as you say. And and I'll, I'll say this. We've been on a lot of these guys, and your message has been consistent from day one, and we're starting to hear that from these dealers. So whether you're a Canadian shop or you're an American shop tuning in, it's still these guys that you have to deal with. They cover the entire continent when it comes to all the audio tech Fisher products and every other product that MSC um, has in their barn. So on that note, Mr. Van Rye, Mr. Penn, thank you so much for taking the time today and joining us. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you, man. sir. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Ciao. So there you have it. That was both Larry and Chris from the MSC America camp. Can't say enough about those guys. I mean, uh, if you're into... Well, no, I can't say. Everybody should be into DSP. So it's not that if you're into DSP, but if you're into looking at systems that work and that that is not only uh, that perform and they're high caliber and high quality, but also a team and people that are going to be there to support you and, and, and lift you up, elevate you along the way and give you every resource possible for you to succeed. I'm going to arguably say these guys can definitely hook you up with that. Um, MSC-America.com. That's where you want to contact. Larry and his team will be happy to help you out. On that note, I want to remind you to continue tuning in to CMA Networks right through to Friday, May 27th. We are currently in our first, uh, let's call it grouping of car audio. That's it. Car audio all the way through to Friday, May 27th. Some of the top brands going in on there. Uh, of course, I want to remind you to tune in, not tune in, but log in to our brandly, uh, brand new redesigned website, cmanetworks.com. Basically, you can find out all the videos, hundreds of videos to choose from. You can search by category, by brand, and even by trainer. Look it up. Both Larry and Chris have their profiles on the website so you can see all the great videos that we've done with MSC America. That's it. Thanks for tuning into this CMA Showcase. Hope you enjoyed all those brand new product announcements from Helix, presented, of course, by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. Yeah, roll it down. I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's left What? Radio. <laughs> Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud Radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What? <laughs>